Bien, cambiando un poco de tema, eh, en la transición de, de, de terapias basadas en la evidencia hacia procesos basados en la evidencia, eh, ¿cuál es la alternativa a la investigación que se ha hecho hasta ahora? Eh, basada en protocolos y diagnósticos recogidos en el DSM. Mm -hmm. So let's now change topic a little bit. Uh, as far as the transition from evidence-based uh, therapies to evidence-based processes is concerned, what is the alternative to the research that has been done so far based on the SM protocols and diagnosis? I missed the first part of that last sentence. What is the alternative? To the research, the research that has been done so yes. far. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, with my colleagues who are interested in process-based therapy, we are answering that very question. And I want people to know that we do not think we have yet done so. Uh, there's a new book coming out in a month called Learning Process-Based Therapy. And there are new measures that are under review right now. And there are new ways of analyzing those measures that are, will be under review within the next week or two. When you see those three things, I think you'll see how I'm trying with my colleagues to step up to this challenging question. I can give you the outlines um, and it fits with what I've said earlier, which is diagnosis should be functional analysis and functional analysis should be a modern approach that includes measures of the contexts in which emotion, thought, attention, sense of self, motivation are arranged in ways that don't foster behavior that is helpful to the person given their goals, their background, their beliefs, their culture. Uh, so my answer is to put processes of change into measures and analyses that fit with an extended evolutionary meta model that's multidimensional and multi-level. And the practical tools to do that are very close. A year from now, I think I'll be able to point to the articles, books, apps, and measures that will make what I'm saying uh, concrete. Es una pregunta muy interesante. De hecho, eh, mis compañeros y yo estamos tratando de responder a esto y nos centramos en las terapias basadas en los procesos. Y hasta ahora no contamos con la respuesta. Sin embargo, va a haber nuevos libros y publicaciones. Uh, por ejemplo, va a salir un libro el mes que viene, Aprendizaje acerca de las terapias basadas en los procesos. Y va a haber también una revisión de una publicación de aquí a una semana o a dos semanas. Y con mis compañeros estamos tratando de responder a esta pregunta tan desafiante. Como dije antes, también el diagnóstico es algo que tendría que ser un análisis funcional y tendría que contar con un enfoque moderno, incluyendo elementos contextuales, donde las emociones, la atención, los motivos, los pensamientos, la autoconciencia, estén organizados en maneras que nos permitan fortalecer las conductas útiles para esta persona según sus uh, valores, según sus objetivos, según su cultura. 
y pienso que hay herramientas prácticas que, con las que no cuento ahora, pero seguramente de aquí a un año les podré brindar toda la referencia a nivel de publicaciones, libros y medidas. Estamos muy cerca a esta respuesta. Could I say, um, could I say already in our analyses that are ideographic, then made nomothetic, based on very high density longitudinal data, 60, 70, 90 data points for a single person before we even begin the analysis, we can see that even the processes that are inside ACT, psychological flexibility processes, need to be understood as part of a complex network. I'll give you an example. Mindful awareness of the present moment. Sounds like a good thing. If it fits with the other flexibility processes, our analyses are showing it is a good thing. But separated and just looked at one at a time, there are individuals for whom it's a bad thing. For example, people may be scanning the present moment to look for danger so that I can avoid it. And even very simple mindfulness skills can be misapplied to do that. Or they can be used to avoid. You take care of the children. I have to go meditate. No good teacher of meditation would create such a thing. But in our modern world, Psychologists have helped create such a thing, selfish mindfulness. And you can see it even in the first studies using high density longitudinal data. So don't hold on to any precious process, even inside ACT. Think of them as a whole system and be prepared to be wrong in a given individual, but to be able to come into their world in a way that's helpful and fits with the kernels, not the one size fits all packages that will empower their life journey. That's the PBT vision. También me gustaría agregar otra cosa. Eh, hemos visto que los procesos de ACT se tienen que considerar como un conjunto, como una red. Eh, de hecho, eh, por poner un ejemplo, la conciencia del momento presente puede ser algo útil y muy bueno si se utiliza junto con otras herramientas. Sin embargo, si se toma como algo separado, ya no es tan útil. También puede ser algo negativo. Por ejemplo, los individuos podrían estar escaneando el momento presente para buscar el peligro y evitarlo. Y hay destrezas de mindfulness, de atención plena, que también se pueden usar en ese sentido como evitación para evitar, por ejemplo, cuidar de tus propios hijos diciendo, bueno, yo me voy a meditar, te toca a ti. Y en el mundo moderno, los psicólogos han aportado a la creación de esta conciencia plena también egoísta. Y yo pienso que tenemos que pensar como un sistema en un sistema global y no solamente en herramientas individuales que utilizar. Genial. Eh, como la siguiente pregunta ya, ya la ha respondido, eh, pasamos a la siguiente, que sería, eh, ante esta propuesta, eh, ¿qué resistencias se muestran desde eh, otras terapias no conductistas, eh, como la psicodinámica, por ejemplo, que ahora mismo aparece en las listas de terapias basadas en la evidencia, este cambio en la, en la terapia basada en procesos, ¿no? Mm -hmm. So, what res uh, resistance is there against this proposal from other non-behavioral therapies, uh, such as psychodynamics, which is on the list of evidence-based therapies? Uh, you'll have to ask that again, that, that psychodynamic uh, is... Uh, what opposition is there against uh, this proposal, like the, the analysis you made uh, 
coming from other non-behavioral therapies, such as psychodynamics. Am I uh, understanding the fear is that process-based therapy will open the door to almost anything? And uh, therefore, that's a concern. Is that the question that issues that are the approaches that are not uh, typically thought of as evidence-based, such as psychodynamic approaches? Mm -hmm. Well, two things. Uh, one, there are uh, psychodynamic approaches that are evidence-based. I mean, if you look at Peter Fonagy's work, for example, uh, it will pass all the usual tests, randomized trials, all those things. Number one. Number two, inside these traditions is clinical wisdom and processes that matter. Take something like defense mechanisms. It's not by accident that the only person who Fred Skinner talked about only positively is Freud. Go read his writings. He never criticizes Freud. Well, part of it is because I think Freud started with the individuals, came up with ideas and principles. No, they weren't well shaped. They need work. But the defense mechanisms, Skinner would look and say, ah, these are all forms of negatively reinforced behavior. And so they are. I think we can say now with a pretty good body of research that without the whole theory that is sometimes pretty spooky, uh, the elements have important points. So what process-based therapy would say is, okay, we are not validating your whole approach or your protocols. We're asking you to measure in a high density way, the processes you think are most important and the kernels of intervention that can change them. And if you can show with individuals measured in this high density way, that your processes apply and your kernels alter and perturbate those systems in ways that are helpful to the person, you belong as part of this large journey with many voices, many different ways forward. But that's not the same thing as I'm going to anoint you and say, oh, now psychoanalysis is okay. I'm not going to do that for CBT. I don't even want to do that for ACT. Put up or shut up. You show me the processes matter and you know how to change them. And when you do, it works in a way that you would expect individual by individual. If you can do that, you belong. And so let's get off this idea that evidence-based therapy means only the behavioral and the cognitive tradition. That's nonsense. But that doesn't mean we're going back to your opinion. It means let's break down the barriers, the schools, the kingdoms, and we allow the data to decide. Sí, me gustaría destacar dos cosas. Eh, la primera es que hay enfoques de la psicodinámica que realmente se basan en las evidencias. Y la segunda cosa es que dentro de esta tradición los procesos son muy importantes, por ejemplo, los mecanismos de defensa. Y no es ninguna casualidad de que Skinner habló bien solamente de una persona, de Freud, porque Freud empezaba con los individuos. Y para Skinner los mecanismos de defensa eran un tipo de conducta eh, por refuerzo negativo y yo pienso que esto sí es verdad. 
y las terapias basadas en los procesos um, pueden no validar ciertos enfoques, pero también están abiertas a, a que otros los validen. Y si esto es posible, uh, entonces se puede solucionar uh, la resistencia. Hay que cambiar esta idea de que las terapias basadas en las evidencias uh, pertenecen solamente a una tradición cognitiva. Sin embargo, esto no significa que ahora volvamos a las opiniones de antes. Simplemente tenemos que hacer que sean los datos que decidan. Could I say just a little bit about these different traditions? Uh, Charles Furster, Furster and Skinner, Scots of Reinforcement was in full-time psychoanalysis for five years. His articles on artificial versus natural reinforcement and on his theory of depression. If you read them with that knowledge, you will see psychoanalytic concepts in these pages. Bob Kohlenberg with functional analytic therapy trained by a, a wing coming off of Lovas, uh, was for a time very interested in psychoanalysis. You can see it in his methods. Uh, Fritz Perls and Gestalt therapy uh, created his methods with a psychoanalyst named Paul Goodman and a behavior analyst named Ralph Hefferlein, a rat running colleague of Fred Keller at the University of Columbia, I mean, at the Columbia University in New York. So these cartoons that behavioral tradition is so pure and has nothing, is nonsense historically, and it's rigid, narrow, prejudicial way of thinking intellectually. Many people have good ideas and it's our job to put them into a coherent system without building foolish walls. Use your philosophy and your principles to create a solid foundation and then open your eyes and arms to the world. Don't use them as barriers between you and others. So you can sing your little songs about we few, we happy few, so pure. And meanwhile, the world very happily will ignore you. And you have brought that upon yourself. And behaviors have known how to do that. And my life has been about saying no to that. Let's build bridges, not walls, but stand on a firm foundation. Sí, me gustaría agregar algo más. Hay muchos ejemplos de personas que han trabajado juntas a pesar de tener una extracción muy diferente eh, y de seguir también uh, doctrinas muy diferentes. Y esto es fundamental porque nos enseña que tenemos que construir un sistema coherente uh, sin paredes tontas, uh, tenemos que construir cimientos muy sólidos mediante nuestros principios, nuestros ideales, uh, nuestros principios filosóficos y luego abrirnos al mundo. No tenemos que crear obstáculos contra los demás y pensar que somos los mejores y los conductistas han sabido muy bien cómo hacer esto y en cambio mi vida se dedica a la misión contraria. Yo digo que no, quiero que construyamos, construyamos puentes y no muros.